Hi guys, welcome back to This Is A Sign. In this video, I'll be 3D modeling myself on Blender with the help of an add-on called Face Builder. I had a lot of fun making this. Um, it's super like photorealistic and I really enjoyed it. So if you wanna learn how to make this, keep watching. So first you have to go ahead and download the Face Builder app. Just look up Face Builder on Google and you should find it. And then you have to install the app in Blender. So just go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and install the file within the Blender um, interface. If you click N on your keyboard, this little side panel should come up, and that's where you'll see the Face Builder add-on. As you see there, it says Create New Head. So before we even do that, we're going to have to take some images of ourselves. So take out your iPhone or your Android or your iPad, whatever you got, take it out and start um, taking pictures of all the sides of your head. So the front, the left, the right. So back on Blender, the first thing you need to do is uh, click that button that said create head. And as you can see, it gives you a blank floating head of some random Caucasian white man or whatever. Um, so the first thing you want to do is click on add images and upload the pictures that you just took um, on your phone. I went with three pictures. They say the more pictures, the better. Um, but I just didn't want to spend too much time on this. And just make sure that the pictures are in the same lighting. As you can see, one side of my head is brighter than the other. And that caused a little bit of some issues further in the video. But we definitely fixed that. So so the three pictures that i uploaded are right there and when you click one it'll pin it and as you can see it has like a wireframe of the model that you have to now align with the current picture so they have this little nice little i guess ai button that automatically aligns it for you you can do it manually but this is just way easier um, but it's not going to be perfect. So you still have to go back and align everything correctly. You can also rotate the image by clicking the three bars next to the image photo and then clicking rotate. And that's exactly what I did. So as you can see, the neck is messed up. So I just clicked on the mesh and then pulled it back so every time you click on it it'll make a pin and now you're able to move that and it will automatically adjust in every picture that you um that you work with so the three pictures are always automatically adjusting to whatever i i did in one of the pictures so just go ahead and align it to your nose to your lips to your ears, to your eyes, and make sure this is as accurate as possible because, you know, this is going to go on the 3D head and you may look end up looking weird if it's not. So once you've aligned all the images, you want to scroll down to textures and where it says create texture, this will pop up and make sure you select all the images and then it'll create the model for you. As you can see, I look like super crazy like <laughs> i honestly look like a man i don't know if it's because i'm bald or or whatever but and i i went into a uh, shade that mode so you can see how it adjusted the model to to my face like it, my double chin was definitely double chinning and the back is black because i don't i didn't take any pictures of the back as you can see so if you want the back of your thing to to have image in it just make sure you take the the picture in the back so I decided to go back and adjust the the texture a little bit more or the wireframes for the pictures. You can always go back and adjust them and then create the texture again and it might change it again. So this was the second attempt. I feel like it looks slightly better, but as you can see, the lighting was off on all the images I took. It was different. So that's why you see those black streaks in, on my face. Um, like I said, try to take all the pictures in the same lighting don't be like me so now there are some mishaps on the texture mapping there's some dark spots and some missing 
you know, it's black in some spots and we're going to fix that by going to the texture mapping. Just switch from layout to texture mapping and here you'll be able to adjust the actual image by basically, it's like painting. You're basically like on the Microsoft Paint app, but on Blender. And you can adjust um, the strength of it and this, the radius of the actual brush. And I wanted to fix these dark streaks on my forehead. So I try to find a color that was similar to that. And I started painting over that. And then I switched from the brush to the smooth tool just to make everything blend and not look so streaky. So I went all over my face fixing all these like imperfections from my mediocre attempt at making my 3D head. Now I already had makeup on in these pictures, but I wanted to enhance it and just make it look better. Like I wanted to become a woman again. I was tired of looking like a man on this model. So I went back to the brush and I got a blush color and I just um, put the strength very low so it wouldn't be too harsh. And I just started adding blush to my face. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to fix my makeup on here, which was like literally my favorite part about all of this like i can actually just beat my face on blender and not even do it in real life and there was some like dark spots on my nose i went ahead and blended those out and i was like i need to fix my lip liner i need to fix my whole entire lipstick actually so i got a brown color and i started outlining my lips and then i did a center a pink for the center and I just cleaned up my edges with some concealer. I'm just kidding. Some tan colored brush. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, I want to be giving UK, UK baddie. So that means I need a bright under eye. So that's exactly what I did. Like, I'm having too much fun with this. Like, like I look like a baddie now. Like, it's giving baddie. And of course, I'm gonna contour my nose. Of course, like, why wouldn't I? Let's go crazy. All right, so this step is super important. If you don't do it, you're going to be mad at yourself. Go ahead and save that file. And since we're doing texture mapping and we're adjusting the texture, you're gonna wanna press that X button. And you see how it says that there's been something modified? Yeah, go ahead and save that. Because if you know what happens if you don't save that? Every all that work, all that beating of the face that you just did, all that color correcting, it will not save and it will go back to the basic model that it already that you um initially created with those images. Okay. So I, I went ahead and did that and I opened Blender back up and I opened my file back up. Now, when you use the smooth tool, it might smooth out some of that texture that's naturally in the images. Um, but that's just the price you have to pay to you know use the smooth tool like i don't know i don't know if anybody knows about an, another way let me know in the comments so i'm adding my freckles back in and it just makes it look like it's texture you know what i mean so i'm just making the radius of the brush super small and i'm adding freckles with the brown color and the white color to add dimension and whatnot so basically i was done with the texture mapping and i went back to layout and I do have a septum piercing, but the picture completely chopped it off. So I went ahead and added a, um, is this called a torus? That cylindrical shape <laughs> that looks like a septum ring. And I shade smoothed it so it could take off the ridges. And I made it super small. And I put it right where my septum is supposed to be. And I wanted to add a metallic material so i went to the metallic uh, material properties and i was like i'm not used to doing this i can do the texture here but i want to open a separate shade editor tab so i just slid over a new tab and i made it a shade editor tab and there's my material i feel like that's way more user friendly and i just put the metallic all the way to one and the roughness to zero if you're on if you've been a loyal subscriber you know how to make a metallic material okay because that's going to be in all of my videos because i'm literally obsessed 
Um, now I do have a Medusa. You could barely see it there, but I was like, let me add a diamond right there. So I do have this other add-on called Blender Kit, and it just downloads materials and objects and stuff straight to um, your blender. So if you don't have that, get it. It's free. I mean, all the stuff there is not free, but there's a lot of free stuff. So I just put the diamond where it's supposed to go to add an environment texture. So I switched over from object to world and mine is already preset up, but just um, go to add texture, environment texture. And that specific node that I was wiggling there should pop up. Um, I get all my environment textures from polyhaven.com. And I tried this one and I was like, oh, this is nice. I like the the red, you know what I mean? And then I was like, I refuse to look like a little boy. I need hair. So trust me, I tried to make hair with the particle system here on Blender and it was not working out for me. So I took my butt to sketchfab.com and I looked up hair and I was trying to find some decent looking pre-made hair that was free. Like that's my main requirement. I'm not paying for any of this stuff. It feels like a robbery, like, you know, no, no gunpoint. So I found a few things that I liked and the best one I could find that was free was this choppy long wig with these choppy bangs. But I was like, you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect, right? And before that, I, I tried this short one and I was like, this is all right, but my hair is actually not this short. So I kind of felt weird. I was like, uh, this does not look like me. Oh, I need a middle part, long jet black bust down, if you know what I'm talking about. I went ahead and imported that choppy wig and I came to the conclusion that my head is huge, like <laughs> only half of the wig could fit. But luckily, we don't do the back of things on this channel. We only do the front. So I'm like, listen, as long as it looks like I have hair in the front, that's all that matters. And then this white background was like covering some of the hair. So I had to like push it back. And this is a reminder. Go ahead and press that X and save the modifications, please, before you are mad at yourself and I wanted some hoop earrings so I just copied and pasted that same hoop from the septum and I placed it somewhere where my ears are supposed to be I went ahead and added a UV sphere and made it metallic just like I did with the septum piercing because I wanted to add these piercings that I don't have but are super cute like I'm actually contemplating getting them and at this point, I was like, I'm done with the actual head. And now I need to stylize everything. I was like, what if I give myself some AirPod Maxes? But then I was like, ooh, I like these oversized AirPod Max look. It's kind of like you're drowning in music type. But like, I didn't end up going with this composition. I tried a million and one things, like even putting myself in this glass orb. But then I was like, no, I'm going to make it into an emission shader so it can look like a sun or something like that. So that's exactly what I did. And I am rendering in Cycles. Cycles is my favorite render engine. I don't really mess with Eevee like that, but you do what you like. And that concludes the end of this tutorial. I am hoping that you guys learned something. I definitely had fun learning this on Blender. Make sure you like, you comment, and you subscribe. And in the comments, let me know what else I should make. Because finding ideas for YouTube videos is like the hardest part. Um, but yeah. I will see you guys in the next one and I might for the next video I actually might make like those metallic face ma masks that like go over like 3D model heads. So if you want to if you want to see me make that 
let me know. Bye.